Welcome to Talking Point. Tonight we want to focus our attention on the atomic uh, junction gas explosion which occurred yesterday. I'll read a statement uh, from the Ministry of Information before we go into the discussion. It says the government of Ghana expresses its condolences to families of deceased persons and its best wishes to persons injured in the atomic junction gas explosion on Saturday 7th October 2017. President Akufuado, in a phone conversation with security officials moments after the explosion, asked for the full complement of resources to be made available to the rescue and investigative efforts. Government commends the fire service, ambulance service, and police service for the quick control and rescue exercise. We also commend medical personnel who are attending to the injured for their professional service. Vice President Mahamudu Baumia on Sunday morning visited the explosion site for an update and a number of hospitals to comfort and support the injured. As at 11.30 a.m. Sunday morning, at least seven persons have been confirmed dead and 132 injured, um, out of which 64 have been discharged and 68 still receiving treatment. An investigation has commenced into the course of the explosion and shall be followed with firm action to forestall further similar recurrences. Any injured persons who may have been evacuated from the scene on their own should kindly inform the Ghana Police Hospital of their location. The public is hereby asked to kindly cooperate with traffic detours as announced by the police. A NADMO help station can also be reached on 029935. 0000 or 029935 to assist residents with further needs. So that's a statement from the Ministry of Information signed by the Honorable Minister Mustafa Abdul Hamid. Tonight on Talking Point, uh, we want to talk to the Deputy PRO for the Ghana National Fire Service, uh, Mr. Prince Billy Anaglati, who has spent uh, the past 24 hours uh, on location at the scene and um, we will also um, we don't do this quite often open the phone lines today for those of you who want to comment on what happened yesterday if you were at the scene if you uh, were involved if you were a victim of some sort or if you had your property damaged whatever it is you want to ask today uh, we would open the phone lines on 0260 969 160 at the appropriate time we'll open the phone lines for you on 0260-969-160 also you can reach us on our whatsapp as usual 0555-131-280 good evening billy good evening it's very difficult to start on the premise after uh, an accident has taken place but we'll do our best to to get the facts correct exactly. and also to help people at home who have been asking so many questions as to uh, how this happened first just give us a brief account um of what happened and what you saw because you were there for most of the night uh, well, thank you for the opportunity i want to say good evening to our cherished viewers um it was unfortunate that we had a call um, yesterday at 1918 hours um, that there was a gas explosion at the very spot where the situation occurred. It took uh, our first thing that, uh, six minutes to get to the scene, that's uh, that of uh, uh, Medina Fire Station. Mm -hmm. Actually, when we had a call quickly with the situation that you know, people were reporting, we dispatched six of our fire engines to the scene at a go. When they got there looking at the intensity was when they again uh, asked for additional tenders. Three more tenders were also deployed to assist them. We had nine tenders on the ground, and uh, we saw that the explosion, uh, the first one occurred before we got to the scene. Two other explosions followed thereafter at the time that we were at the scene. Um, if you look at the... So just, just a minute. So there were three explosions and not two as reported no three explosions. three explosions. one happened before the the fire okay got so to three explosions city. yeah exactly um because it is a twins uh, you know uh filling stations one petrol filling station and that of the gas filling station uh, that 
were coexisting. Uh, the explosion affected the, the, the petrol fuel station. Uh, some of the roof were ripped off. There were fire scattered all over the facilities of the fuel station, and the gas fuel station was also, you know, highly on fire. Uh, we quickly uh, map up a situation where we divided our people and some were on the fuel fuel station and, and decided to ensure that the fire do not spread to uh, those of their dispensers and other areas. So that was exactly what they did in the shortest possible time. But uh, the main concentration was on the gas fuel station where about three uh, gas tankers, including um, bulk uh, vehicle that was apparently w was also there to discharge gas before the situation. So it took us about two and a half hours to bring the fire under control. But because of the bulk um, vehicle that was still having gas in it, there was still gas that was coming with fire still on it. And the best we could do is to ensure that it doesn't explode. And then what we were doing is to have a cooling process on it, ensuring that it goes below uh, its uh, explosive temperature, temperature yeah, so that it will not explode. That was what we were doing throughout the night till the following morning, um, around uh, 6 a.m. when the, the last fire went off. Even that, though there was no fire on it again, but the, the gas in it was actually boiling, uh, that we continued to have uh, this cooling process on it until uh, about 4 o'clock this afternoon when the temperature totally went off and uh, we had another tank uh, tanker that came and we were able to evacuate the, the rest of the gas that was actually in the tank into it to ensure that yes uh, normalcy returns to the premises all right we'll, we'll talk a bit more on uh, uh, the, the courses and all of this but the vice president uh, uh, was there uh, today to ascertain what had happened and to also talk about a few things that government uh, intended to do so we have a playback uh, the soundbite actually of his excellency the vice president at the scene today let's listen President, I would like to extend my condolences to all the bereaved families and, 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 the, and also to those who, um, our sympathies to all those who have also been injured and affected. In fact, all of Ghana has been affected. It's a major tragedy. Um, but at the end of the day, um, this is one too many. This is one too many. This is about the eighth explosion gas in three years and I think what Ghanaians really want is solid policy to deal with this matter once and for all we are going to move uh, to deal with it uh, it's not about committees and committees upon committees and nothing gets done I think that we owe it to the country and the government is going to take this very seriously um, discussions were being held last night uh, about the way forward we wouldn't preempt too many things but some new policies are going to come in and those who will try to resist those new policies uh, I don't think they will be listened to uh, because it's important for us to put the safety of our people above everything else and I think it's in the interest of the country that we actually implement some new policy directions the National Petroleum Authority the EPA the energy ministry all of us, fire service, they're all going to be involved as we put this new policy together. And we've got to, we're going to move quite quickly to do it. It's not going to be one that you wait weeks for it to happen. It's going to happen relatively quickly. Uh, we pretty much have an idea of what we need to do in terms of policy. The fire service responded very quickly within one and a half hours to try to get this under control. The police, the military, you know, NADMO, the health services. It was a major effort and the disaster could have been much bigger but for their intervention. So we really like on behalf of the whole country to thank them most sincerely uh, for their efforts and their continued efforts. As you can see, they continue to try to bring things under control. So there you have it, uh, the Vice President, His Excellency Dr. Mahamudu Baumia at the scene.
So Prince, let, let's, let's continue with this discussion because the fire service or the Ghana Fire Service is one of the regulatory bodies to ensure that people who decide to place petrol filling stations, gas stations, uh, or any hazardous business that you do, you have to actually certify before it's done. <coughs> Some have said that you do not actually certify these places. It's not true. Um, although it is true that the fire service is one of the regulators in terms of ensuring the siting of gas filling stations, we have other you know, stakeholders, the EPA, the MPA, they are all part of the stakeholders and the assemblies are also there. What the fire service look out for you know, uh, is to ensure that the assemblies have the zoning status of the, the, the area. Um, if it is about uh, you know, mixed zoning or, or that is zoning that determines that yes, you can have a gas filling station in there, we go ahead and give you permit in principles. And our permit also go ahead to tell you that with the safety facilities that we prescribe in our permit, when you are building your gas filling station, you should ensure that those uh, safety facilities form part of your construction. And at, at the end of your, when you finish constructing the premises, you need to come back to fire service. We go back to reconcile the what is on our engineering fire drawing that spell out the safety measures and what is existing on the ground if it correlates to what is on the the engineering drawing they will then give you the go ahead to operate even that the the last requirement is to ensure that your people uh, people that are going to work at the facility are made available for fire service to train before they you continue to uh, operate the facility. So it is not only fire service that has what it takes to ensure the siting of gas filling station. Ours is purely about safety on the ground. Okay, so what about periodic checks? This filling station, from my, my uh, information that I have gathered, it says that it hadn't been fire checked in a while. Well, I will not be able to um, either confirm or deny that because um, Periodically, we have our fire safety personnel that go out. Even apart from that, our fire certificate is renewed periodically. So if you submit your um, uh, application to renew your fire uh, certificate, uh, which is uh, uh, yearly, we, we ensure that fire personnel get to the filling station. Was this one renewed? That is what I said. I, I, it will be difficult until I'm able to check on the records to see whether they have renewed their fire safety. And that will form part of our investigation I will be doing to determine the last time that they have renewed their fire certificate and other facilities that form part of safety measures on the ground. But to add to what exactly the situation is, apart from we checking on that, we are also aware that some of them, after you are able to have the first training of their uh, uh, employees uh, to ensure they have the fire safety measures uh, in place, they find it difficult when they again engage other people to work for them, making them available for additional fire safety training becomes a problem. So people are engaged to work on some of these gas filling stations and they do not have what it takes to first of all, identify hazards on the ground and their own activities on the ground at times become so a, a very good recipe for fire outbreak uh, on the, the premises. Many of these fire outbreaks or the explosion that we have on these gas uh, facilities, if you look at the trend, you realize that all those gas explosions that we had were as a result of uh, you know, offloading a gas from a tanker to the other. That's I was just how, going to ask you, is yeah. this the case with this particular explosion? What has your initial uh, uh, investigation revealed? Yeah, we are still continuing to investigate. That is why I will not talk much on this particular investigation until we are able to unravel the exact cause of it. But what I'm saying is that with the trend, uh, we realize that it's all lack of, uh, you know, uh, attitudinal change to some of these things, and it is a reckless way 
um, most of these attendants and the drivers in their mates, you know, uh, handle some of these uh, facilities and uh, they do not um, adhere to safety measures in the process of offloading. With the period of offloading, that period is a very delicate period that there are several measures you need to adhere to before you begin even offloading. But the reckless way some of them do all this it has actually resulted to this. But I believe that if we are able to uh, uh, ensure that we won't really want to prevent some of these um, unfortunate situation, then the owners of the, the gas filling station have a lot to do because um, they need to put in mechanism to monitor the attitude and the behavior of the people that they employ to work on the ground. We, the regulators, will not be there 24-7 to monitor the activities of the people. The, 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 the owners of the gas filling station to ensure that they have a way of evaluating the, 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 the performance attitude uh, of those that they have on the ground to work with them. If that is not done, I believe strongly that we will continue to be having some of these preventable fires with us. All right, let, let me ask you this, because uh, this is something that worries me personally. The fact that you have a, a petrol filling station situated next door to a gas station, uh, a LPG gas, in an area where uh, thousands of Ghanaians pick uh, transport or transportation to work and to the to their homes right opposite it by a major investment such as the atomic junction uh, flyover is that normal well this question is difficult in the sense that as at the time that they were having this gas filling station and all that i would not be able to tell what the 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 environmental situation was at the time when they were having that but what i know is that Quite recently, about a, a year or two ago, when we started having these challenges in terms of gas explosion with the regulators, we came on board. Before uh, this um, June 3rd situation came up, I think a situation of gas explosion was not part of what we have on the ground. We, we were actually allowing the coexistence of these uh, two filling stations. But for now, uh, this decision has changed that we are not going to allow any coexistence of all these filling stations that you are rightly talking of. Um, and I will come back again and look at the, the environmental area. If you look at the gas filling station, and then, like you rightly stated, that there are taxi, you know, uh, lorry parks and other people that converge uh, close to the filling station and all that, you will come back to ask yourself, are those uh, taxi ranks of, or, or lorry parks close to those filling station um, are actually you know being approved uh, station that they have or it is just that the drivers themselves have taken that place to be a filling station. There are a lot that if you really want to look at it that holistically we need to assess all this uh, uh, to determine if really um, those illegal that place is either approved or illegal taxi drivers that are still using those gas fillings. I'm saying this in the sense that if you look at some of the gas filling stations, as we continue to educate the owners to say that even gas filling stations are not lorry parks, that at the end of the, the, the day, in the evening, you see drivers coming to park their vehicles uh, at the gas filling station or petrol filling station, which is against the safety regulation, and we keep hammering this. But if you look at what happened um, just yesterday, a lot of vehicles were, were destroyed in this, basically to, to say that they were vehicles that their owners came to live on at the filling station and using it as a, a you know a, a parking lot what it takes is that many of those gas filling station other jurisdiction you know had fire situation not because the filling station itself has a problem of any fire but those vehicles it could be a faulty electrical you know system that has resulted to that with this particular one i i will say that we need to really uh, assess the situation to see if those gas filling station, the gas filling station and the petrol filling station, what time were, were they being existent at the time that the, 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 the area was not a, a lorry station where it is close to those areas? We have a lot of uh, hawkers that also move around those areas these days that not only that place, there are other areas that we see hawkers getting close to filling station. We see people even selling um, sources of 
uh, uh, fire that they are using to, to cook and do all other things close to filling stations, of which we have moved ahead to even close down some of those filling stations before, ensuring that until sanity prevails, they will not be opened. But some would have thought that, uh, I mean, only this year we had the last gas uh, was it this year i, I think, think it last, last year, year yeah, end, end of last year we had the, the la, uh, gas explosion yeah. which also took the lives of many people yeah i uh, think this year was the western region one one yes we had, we had one yeah. in western region but the challenge for for many of us is that uh in our city in accra we do know that urbanization has really challenged us in terms of the migration of people down into the city. So Accra as it is, is becoming smaller in terms of the number of people coming in, into Accra. And therefore, the onus is on the regulators to ensure that people are safe. However, that doesn't seem to be the case because the springing up of gas stations and filling stations all over the place is a worry for many, many people. Yet, we seem to not want to do anything about it. It's, it's a challenge, and, and, and as much as we appreciate what the Vice President said, that things are going to be done, the regulators themselves, I'll give you a classic example, and I must say congratulations to, and thank you very much to the Ghana Fire Service for talking to us, because other regulators don't want to talk to us. EPA, uh, NPA, NADMU have all decided that they don't want to say anything after yesterday's event. And I find that quite, uh, uh, not not really good in, in terms of giving information to people because people are worried people who live next to filling stations are worried people who live next to gas stations are worried but if the regulators don't want to talk then that becomes a problem nobody's accusing anybody of anything you know so so thank you very much uh, uh, for being here let's go on and to you you've been around to see uh, some of the injured i, I suppose you've been yes to exactly I, i've been to uh um, 37 hospital the, um, Around 1 a.m. Uh, this morning, I was at the 37 hospital then uh, to uh, see um, the extent of injuries and the uh, burns, uh, the degrees of burns that some of them sustained. And uh, today, be, uh, around 4:35, I was also at um, uh, Pen Pentecost Hospital. I was at Legon Hospital, uh, also at Medina Hospital, uh, to look at situations myself. So, how soon do we expect? this investigation from the Ghana Fire Service to, to, to conclude? Well, uh, it will be difficult for me to put a time frame to it in the sense that even today, though we, we, we met with the owner of the gas filling station, but we are looking at the trauma that they were already in, and then we also want to have those that were working there before the incident to give us few information uh, on what actually might have transpired. Uh, but, and again, the, 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 the owner said he would uh, provide them but we are giving them a day or two where they they, they should at least um, maybe get out of their trauma then we can have uh, quality information from them that would aid and assist our investigation but i, I can promise that um the seriousness that which we are looking at it it will not take us too long a time and then we'll be able to conclude that i wish i wish certain are we certain that this is it it won't happen again. Are we certain? Well, all that of us. We have the willpower. We have, we have the, uh, the fire service has the authority to go and to close down some of these hazards. Are we certain that that's going to happen? Well, we have closed down gas filling stations and other filling stations before. Even last year, uh, November, we, we closed down some of these gas filling stations before for flout in our regulations and once they 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 complied you open them they, they reopen. Well, of course when they comply then they are able to rectify those that we think were, they were doing wrongly and i think the only way is to reopen them that is exactly what we are doing but i think what all of us should do should not only be on the regulators we even the individuals that are going even to buy gas at the places we have also contributed uh, largely to some of these fire fire situation um, you see people even at the, the the area where they want to fill their gas cylinders yet they are having calls using their mobile phones that is also against the, the let me let me come back here. to you i have a, a a former presidential uh, independent presidential candidate uh, we call him joy jacob Osayabua, who lives in that area on the line um good evening sir yeah good evening how are you sir 
and by God's grace we are alive. We thank God for that. We believe that you are in that area? Yes, um, I do. And what uh, is what 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 are your concerns now? You see, um, first and foremost, let me um, say hi to your viewers, and let me congratulate the fire service uh, personnel who is there to give us a little bit about the information. And I understand him from his point of view, and he's been just economical with, with information. And that is what they've been trained to do. But I'm talking as, as an engineer, and I'm talking about someone who understands safety. And I know that a lot of measures that the fire service is doing, because their former boss, um, are you, we used to work together. So I know what they've been doing with the fire service. But this is the issue. It has to do with safety. And it's about Filled revelation by the regulatory body, MTA. You see, I just want the whole nation to understand that this is the first of its kind. And we're going to have about potential 400 of such cases because of that of this safety issue. About the fact that they need a suction pump together with the parking system to to ensure that there are no leakages of this sort. And you see, if you are, if you've managed to give a license to somebody, whether the person is affiliated to your party or not, thank God, I don't care about that. But at least the person should also be gracious enough to do the right thing for Ghanaians. The issue has got nothing to do with the sighting. It's not about the sighting at all. I, have, I was there last night after the rain this morning. I, at least you can see me. I, I'm the one in blue. Okay? I just saw it on, 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 your, on the TV now. I was the one wearing hat with blue uh, hats and the blue top. I just disguised myself. That is what I did last night because I wanted to have a clearer picture and what actually transpired. The same thing that the fire service man was just telling everybody that all the gas explosions that we've had is as a result of during evacuation or during the time that they are discharging. And because of this safety me measure that they, they don't have in place, and it's causing the lives of so many. This fire, I'm telling you, my brother, we must thank the Chichinga man who leads his fire, and God being gracious, the little gas that was in the atmosphere just excluded while the gas was on top. Okay. If the gas has actually descended on the ground, just like what happened at last, all okay. the cars and all those who were there would have been burnt or dead by now. The casualties would not have been this uh, two, four, or six people who, because of the pandemonium, were knocked down by vehicle. Okay, all right. The NDA must make sure that this safety. And just as the NCA is closing down uh, um, FM station, they must make sure to close down all the gas filling stations that do not have these safety suction pumps and valves in place. All Other right. Other than that, we are going to kill ourselves. All right. Thank you very and much. Thank you very much, uh, um, uh, Joy, for that. For that, uh, um, quite interesting that uh, he agrees with you to a certain point about the fact that uh, uh, safety is, is paramount. Yes. But he's talking about suction points, and yes. and do they have them? Yes. Because he Some seems to feel that most of, of these stations don't have them. Of course, that is one of the challenges. Some of them use the mecha the mechanical way of trying. So to why do you why do you give them permits if this is a critical component? of their operations and they don't have them what about i believe he has stated it rightly that it is the mpa that looks at that aspect but, of but, it but uh, the fire service no. is for safety yes. uh, and the reason i'm saying the fire service is that yeah. if you realize that they don't have it and it's hazardous then it doesn't have to be the mpa well exactly uh, probably we we are missing it here 
the fire service, as we said, is true, is about safety uh, in certain direction. And then the MPA also is about safety from another perspective, where the, the, the actual uh, facilities that they use in either, you know, transferring the, the facility or all that, the MP also look at it. All right. So we, ha we have a thin line between what the fire service look at as safety and what the MP is. Right. Billy, let's look at the, the possibility of, because people have talked about the fact that it doesn't matter where it is located. It, exactly. Because in many countries, it's located within the community. However, <coughs> the safety checks and the periodic, how often do you think they should be done? Well, uh, apart from the, the yearly renewal that we go back to do it, um, what we have also been doing is to have snap checks on them uh, periodically and announce we get to the various places to, to check on this. When you have you know, a, a plan checks on some of these facilities before you get in there, things are put rightly and then there you get in, you don't see. So at times we get there without announcing it. But again, I will come back to my question again, that if we are looking at all the regulators thinking that it, it, it is on the shoulders of the regulators to uh, minimize or prevent some of these disasters, we will be mixing the target. Mm. Because we are not at the filling station 24-7. We only periodically come there to check it. But the people that are really working, they should be, must be responsible Of enough. course. They should really try to, to, to have sanity in whatever they okay. do. But the reckless way that they handle some of these issues are the big... There's something I need to ask you, and this is another question that, for me, worries a lot of people. When they bring you the technical documents before uh, you approve whatever it is you approve, do they include a buffer zone where nobody or nothing is supposed to be uh, within maybe 10 meters of a filling station or whatever, or a gas station? Don't they have like uh, an exclusion zone uh, included in the technical drawings? Um, with what we look out for, and again I will come back to that, with what we look out for, um, it is specifically on the assembly that collect all other permits from all other regulators. They give the final uh, permits regarding if um, the, the, the land use, the land use determines some of the, the buffer zone and all that you have. They, they, they need to understand that the, the plots on which you are going to have the gas filling station, it is that large to contain the filling station and to have another buffer area where it um, could be a reserve that in case of anything, those areas could at least assist in an emergency situation. But in the technical, uh, okay. So, so, yeah. so the reason I'm asking about this is because you do receive a copy of the technical drawings. The yeah, that, that, that is our engineering drawing that we gave them. That would, that would but, but that is based on their drawings as well, isn't it? Yes, exactly, the structure drawing. The structure drawing. That, yeah, and that I'm, and that's what I'm asking. Doesn't it include an exclusive zone for safety and so on and so forth? Yeah, that, that, is, that is what I'm saying that, of course, we are looking out for, the, the reason why we look out for some of those issues are to determine when you are going to have an assembly point for some of those uh, uh, facilities that you need to ensure that you even have uh, 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 an assembly point, you should also be able to ensure that you have a space where there should be uh, maneuvering of vehicles when you get into that. Yes, those things are taken care of, actually, to know that, yes, um, in case of any emergency, vehicles <coughs> should also be able to maneuver within the space left around. We look at all that as well. Let's talk about the fire service. How, how are you doing after tomorrow, um, after yesterday? The numbers um, and so... How many fire service... How many fire service people were on the ground yesterday? Well, actually, we have nine um, fire engines on the ground, and we have basically about 68 men on the ground yesterday. 68? 68 men, yes, okay. personnel on the ground yesterday to ensure. And the acting chief officer himself was there. His uh, two deputies were also with him. His staff officer were, was also there. And then they left very late. Um, into the, the dawn today. But the fire service had an injury itself. So you're yeah, well, one, 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 one of, of our, person. yeah, one of our personnel, uh, you know, was actually part of the casualties that we are talking. The, he has spent uh, yesterday and the whole day today at the police hospital. 
and um, I'm, I'm hoping that he, he should be able to respond to treatment. He has some dislocation on the leg. A dislocation? Yes, oh, okay. and, and that, that is exactly what happened to him. All right. Um, so we, we are looking at this as a, as a new trend and they're trying to assess it technically. All right, to let see. me take it. The, the next phase of all of this is the investigation. Exactly. What, what's the procedure for that? What do you have to go through for that? Obviously, yeah. you're, you're, you're gathering evidence. I, I Exa so. Exactly. Um, fire investigation actually starts before the fire, during the firefighting, and after the firefighting. Before the fire is to be able to interview people that were available before the situation happened, they will be able to give you some certain information as to what transpired before the incident occurred. Then you pick out all those information, then you do your deductions, then you also pick the remains of what has happened, even during the firefighting. As we are fighting, there are other investigators that are also there that will be looking out few other things and uh, you could also you could also determine how fast the, the fire is spreading is there any accelerant but because this one is a gas fire definitely you know the gas itself will be burning that could cause certain explosion um so we look at various other things um had it not be that is a gas fire it is a room fire and all that we look at the smoke pattern on the wall mm. that will lead you to the fire zone itself that will tell you that this fire could be started from this corner you identify try to see if there are any other uh, sources of uh, uh, heat that could cause the fire. So in a room setup, then you look at electrical point, you look at any other... Uh, but this is not a room setup. Yes, so I'm just giving a general okay. look. At, but this particular one, what we, we are looking out for is to pick the, the, the remains of the gas filling station, things that have remained, to examine them to see what exactly happened based on some of the information that we have gotten. Uh, to also, you know, correlate it. That's a, that's, a, that's a growing concern that the Ghana Fire Service, uh, as one of the regulators, is not in sync or there's no synergy between the Ghana Fire Service and the NPA. It's not true. And that is a growing concern. I, I, I know that's what you say, but there's a growing concern that the NPA seems, seems uh, uh, allegedly, works in, in, in silos. Isolation? Yes. And, no, and the, the, the fire service only comes in when something happens. Is that correct? It's not correct. We, we have a committee um, with all the, the stakeholders. Uh, we meet regularly to look at some of these uh, situations that, that happened. Um, we, we always try to technically... When you say regularly, have you met this year? Yes, exactly. I, I should say that um, every two weeks uh, uh, the, the committee meets. What committee is this? It is a committee of all these um, uh, stakeholders in terms of uh, giving out uh, maybe permit and all that, trying to assess whether they are meeting the requirement. I'm talking in terms of fire service. I'm talking in terms of MPA, EPA. These are these are the committees, uh, the people from various areas that come together. Basically, every two weeks they, they meet to uh, correlate and look at a few other things in regard to. They move in as a team also to assess some of these. Uh, let, let me ask you something, Billy. I, I, and I, I understand. I understand that you need to. Uh, 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 say that they meet and all of these things. Where are these? Where are the reports on the committees? Well, like if the committees yeah. meet every two weeks to discuss yeah. these things, where are the reports? Well, um, or I the minutes for for for. Well, I, I don't think uh, the, the committees uh, uh, minutes is, is something just to 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 be uh, you know a rush to the press to 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 publish that yes the committee. I don't see any of those committees, but in case of any situation that we are talking over that is concerned um, of, of everybody um, with this particular um, investigation that we are going to do holistically, definitely the, the report will be submitted to our CETA minister, which is the Interior Ministry. But for us to publish a, a committee's a minute. No, I'm, I'm just asking because yeah. of the fact that you say, uh, and, and for, oh, yes, for, all for, the most, agencies, for, for yes. most agencies, yes, all these you can agencies. go onto their website. There are informations, and yeah, there are informations on all these gas filling stations and the asset where we meet to determine facilities on those grounds. Those that are all not right. doing well, those that are doing well, we have information. All right. all right, Billy, let's wrap up the show and um, give us your final comments and what to expect in the next coming days. What, are, I, what, what we were going to continue to do, we've been doing, but there are terms that when situation again crop up this way we intensify our fires on all other facilities also to ensure but 
I keep saying that some of these uh, unfortunate situations could have been prevented, will continue to be prevented, when the owners again just uh, make it a point to avail the workers to the fire service to train, to give them the eye, to be able to identify hazards on the ground, to be able to know that their activities could be a good recipe for some of these disasters to occur. Then they will be able to know when and where they, they should not be able to do that. But when we fail to um, train these people, when we fail to avail these people to be trained, I think this situation will come to live with us. But I also want to say that um, for us to prevent this, we should not be looking at all only on the regulators. We, the individuals, our activities attempt also contribute to some of this uh, disaster that we have. This one, we were told that there was somebody selling kebab and all that. Uh, it, it, it's, it's only one of those other people that try to have their business close to some of these uh, filling stations that has also resulted to some of these disasters. But we don't know that for sure. You have to... Um, oh, yes, yeah, that is what I'm saying. Yeah, yes, yes, if that is it. At I'm the moment, that's speculation. Yeah, exactly. It's true. Okay. All right. So there you have it. I've been talking to Billy Anaglati, uh, uh, Deputy PRO of the Ghana Fire Service, and we've been looking at um, the atomic Jackson gas explosion which happened yesterday. Well, the truth of the matter is that uh, we have to congratulate our security forces. Uh, they, they did a yeoman's job yesterday. But you, uh, the individual at home, myself, we also have to be responsible citizens. We need to take care of ourselves and take care of our family. Ghana needs all of us. My name is Jill Terjiman, and this is Talking Point.